Today, we're going to be bleeding the brakes on my 2017 BMW M3. Now, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, but I'm going to the track next weekend, and the track requires that you flush the brakes at least uh, before every event. So that's what I'm doing. No issues with the brakes, but I need to put a new uh, fluid in there. Uh, the same procedure uh, actually applies to most of the emulsion makes and models out there, because we are going to be using a power bleeder. Now, uh, the power bleeder, basically you attach it to the, uh, to the top of your uh, brake fluid reservoir and it pushes the pressure through the system and then all you have to do is just go through the calipers and then release the excess old fluid through and then fill the new fluid uh, through the, uh, the reservoir. Pretty straightforward. So this is what we're going to be needing. We're going to be needing the, um, the pressure bleeder, these two uh, waste containers. This is the adapter. Now when you get your pressure bleeder, and this is, a, this is actually a good product. This is made by Motif. Motif. Um, and just make sure you get the model that's made for European cars. I actually did get a model that's made for uh, American cars and the cap is completely different. So make sure that you get a car, get a cap that's uh, specifically made for your car. Uh, for the track, I use uh, Motul RBF 600. It's been working great for me. Uh, what else do we need? I already removed the, uh, uh, the filter in the brake uh, fluid reservoir uh, only because uh, I kind of peeked in there and I, I couldn't wait. So that, that goes in the brake fluid reservoir. Uh, we have a tool to remove some rivets. Uh, we have a puck to jack up the car, my trusted uh, impact wrench. And then this, I'm gonna show you, I'm, gonna, I'm using this uh, IKEA tool uh, for my plastic uh, uh, bolt rem uh, removal procedure. It's actually pretty pretty useful and uh, and I keep it, I always keep it handy. Uh, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. And then once the wheels are off, I'm actually going to put some uh, aluminum high heat tape over the wheel weights. So when I'm at the track, the weights don't come off. One last thing I forgot to mention, uh, this is kind of what you need, but you could use many different things. You can even use a turkey baster, but basically you're gonna use uh, some sort of an evacuator pump to evacuate as much fluid as possible from the, uh, from the brake reservoir. And uh, use your tool to pry this rivet out. Then you use your trusted IKEA tool. This exposes the, uh, the brake fluid reservoir. Uh, again, I peeked in there, so I'm gonna have to wipe some uh, some residue. You don't want any dust getting in there. You don't want con you don't want to contaminate the uh, the system. So let me get a rag and clean this out. And as you can see, I took the strainer out, and let's now go ahead and siphon some fluid out. So this is approximately how much fluid I evacuated from the uh, from the from the container. Not as much as I would have hoped so, but it is what it is. Uh, we're gonna take that cap and screw it into the top. You gotta make sure the rubber piece is underneath. It comes, in the package it comes separated. And now since I've never used this tool, I wanna make sure it's nice, uh, it's nice and tight. So I'm gonna pressure test it for a few minutes and pump it up to about 15 PSI. Uh, so we're gonna give it a few minutes now to see if the pressure holds at 10. If it does, uh, we're ready to uh, bleed the system. We've waited a couple of minutes and uh, there seem to be no visible leaks. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to unscrew the top. And now we are ready to bleed the brakes. And to do so, we're gonna do the following. We're gonna take our brand new brake fluid and pour it in the bottle. And let's grab another one. Now with the container filled up, let's close this bad boy. And before we pump it up, let's jack up the car. And I'm sure you already know this, but you're supposed to bleed the brakes starting from the caliper that's farthest away from the, uh, from the brake booster. So in our case, and most of the cars actually, it's the passenger rear wheel. So we're gonna do the passenger wheel then we're going to do the driver's rear wheel, then we're going to do the, uh, the front passenger, and then we're going to do the front driver wheel. Now that the wheel is off, we have to locate the bleeder valve. The bleeder valve is actually located in the back of the caliper. It's covered by this little dust shield, dust cap. So we're going to pop it open, 
And first what we're going to do is we're going to put a wrench over it. Lefty loosey righty tidy. Okay. So it's actually this way. Okay. And now we can pl put the hose over it. So it kind of looks like this. So the hose from the waste container goes over the valve and then I've got the screw so I can easily open and close it. The bottle comes with this handy hanger, but I don't think I'm gonna be hanging it because uh, there's really no need. Okay, so the back is prepped now. What we have to do now is uh, build up enough pressure to uh, push the brake fluid in. And from, from what I've read and I've watched online, it's between 10 and 15 PSI. Okay, so that's about right. We locked it in place. We've got 15 PSI. Uh, once again, we're just making sure there are no leaks. I'm not seeing anything getting wet. So it looks like indeed the container is sealed. Let's go to the back now. And in the back, what we're gonna do is we're gonna loosen up the bleeder valve and that should push our fluid out. And you can see how it's slowly starting to come out. So this being the farthest break from the system, you wanna release as much brake fluid as possible from this side. And uh, in our mind, I wanna say, I wanna probably go up to here. So just let's wait for it to uh, flow out. While we're waiting, let's see what's happening in the front. So the front is still maintaining the, uh, the pressure. It came down a little bit, but that's understandable because we are pushing the, uh, the fluid in. The line is full and we are pushing the fluid all the way from the front to the back. Since we're waiting for the fluid to flow, why don't we inspect the back a little bit? Now, I'm not getting any noises. Everything is pretty good, but it's always good to check out your suspension to see if everything's in, uh, in a good working order. Uh, I oftentimes inspect the spacers to make sure they're sitting nice and tight. Uh, we have uh, these track pads that I made a video about last year. These appear still to be fine, so uh, we're gonna have no issues at uh, this week's event. I am bringing in a spare set just in case, uh, but it looks like we should be fine with these. We're back in the front. Uh, let's pump it up to 15 PSI. And at the same time, we wanna make sure that the container doesn't run dry because you don't wanna be pushing any air into the system. While we wait, why don't we put some aluminum tape on these wheel weights? I am actually starting to notice a cleaner fluid flow in. So I think it's time for us to close it up and go to the other side. Be sure to put the dust cap cover on. And now it's time to move to the other side. Okay, so we have a full bottle of evacuated uh, brake fluid from both of the back wheels. Uh, as you can see, since it's kind of evacuating to the bottom, you can see that, that the bottom is cleaner and the top is a bit dirtier. So this goes to show you that we are doing the right thing. The old fluid was kind of, uh, was used. So uh, good thing we're replacing it. Uh, so we're gonna put this aside and grab a new container. Now, before we start pumping, uh, we wanna make sure that we still have fluid in the new one and it looks like we still do, so we are good to go. Okay, so the procedure for the front is slightly different because uh, the front caliper is slightly bigger, so it's got two bleeding points. It's got this bleed nipple, and it's got one here in the back. So the procedure calls for bleeding the outside first, and then doing the inside second. Now, before we get started, you might be thinking, what the hell are these things? If you've missed my videos, these are my custom-made mud flaps that I've made to protect the rear uh, quarter panel of my car. Now, as you can, these are actually, this is the wider model that I made. The first prototype that I've made uh, wasn't big enough, but look at this. This is all the dirt that would have ended up on the, back of, uh, on the back of my car and on the side door. It doesn't look that bad. It actually looks pretty, pretty decent. And it really, really protects my car and helps it uh, stay clean. I actually drove in the rain today and look, 
look, the door is fairly clean. There's nothing, there's nothing on the quarter panel in the back. So I think these are working fine. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing them, uh, shoot me a message at got6speed at gmail.com and I can make these for you uh, uh, fairly easy. I've got my template ready. I've got three different options, but this is the most aggressive one and I love it. Just like before, we're gonna pop the dust cap open, put the hose over it, then gently unscrew it. Until you see some fluid coming out. And there you go. In this case, we will not have to evacuate as much fluid as we did in the back because the line is only coming from this side to that. So uh, maybe a quarter of the container will suffice. All right, so the fluid is coming out nice and clean now. I think we can close it up and move to the other side. And while we wait, let's take a look at the wheel well one more time. Let's look at my awesome mud flap. Look at all the debris that's being stopped from getting <laughs> splashed onto the door. I love it. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the brake pad. It seems like the brake pad is kind of on its low side, so uh, I might have to swap him out the track. The back seems to be okay. The front might be a bit questionable. Uh, so let's see uh, what the guys at the tech line say. Uh, other than that, the shock appears to be clean, no leaks uh nothing really questionable in the front before we do anything else we got to make sure we torque the wheels okay the wheels are torqued let's remove this device We want to make sure that the level is fine. So the level is, if this is max here, it's kind of hard to see, but right in there, it says minimum. So I am right in between. Uh, I am, I'm going to start the car to see if it changes anything. Uh, I'm still going to leave it the way it is because if I do put new pads in the front, uh, this will raise the level a little bit higher. So I should be okay, but I'm kind of in between. So that should be good. Uh, let's go ahead and start the car now. So the brake pedal is nice and solid. I'm gonna give it a quick go and reverse. Okay. The pedal is nice and solid. The return is great. The clutch pedal returns fine. So uh, it looks like we did it. And just to show you what I've evacuated from the car, these are the two containers. This is the first one you can see a lot. It's a lot darker than the, uh, than the second one, but nevertheless, I'm glad we did it. Uh, now I'm gonna put this back in these containers, recycle it at, the, uh, at my facility, and, uh, and that's it. So I've got a couple of plastics to replace, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. But this goes to show you that bleeding the brakes is nice and easy if you got the right tools. I'm going to link everything that I've used in the description below. So if you're interested in buying it, it's going to be nice and easy for you. If you have any questions, leave them down below or shoot me a message. And I will see you in the next video.